creativity is capital that requires innovation. And I use the word capital broadly, so it's obviously economic, um, but it's also symbolic capital. So that's where starving artists are also generating capital. It's basically the ability to dream up new things, new approaches, uh, new ways of thinking about things, and then to turn them into something useful. Imagining the world differently or imagining the things you're doing, the, the, the processes you're using, but also the objects you look at in a different way, and trying to do, in the simplest sense, kind of new things. And sometimes you're doing new things with, uh, you're just recombining. Sometimes it's just about recombination rather than, you know, radical innovation. Warhol economy is the confluence of fashion and art and music and design and the way that these industries interact with each other fundamentally through their social lives. The places that are able to cultivate those social dynamics become incredibly successful um, because that's really the basic condition for how these industries do work. One of the great advantages New York has is simply the sheer diversity and size of this place and that it's a place where ideas are constantly coming at you, constantly colliding with, with, with each other. And I think that you know, that's absolutely a, a fantastic asset that, you, that a lot of other cities just can't duplicate. Increasingly, cities are switched onto this issue. Um, we work in, not just in the UK, we work in uh, China, we work uh, in some European countries, and everyone's switching onto the idea that the, the cities of the future um, have to have uh, an economy that's based on creativity and knowledge. They can't have an economy anymore that's based on, on manufacturing. Uh, they can't have an economy that's based on some of the uh, you know, old businesses. It's got to be based on, on, on the ability to be creative. New York is still one of the most culturally relevant places in the world. It's just we have to be worried about 10 years from now because it's become a very hard place for new influxes of labor to come in. Well, everybody seems to be saying that there's a danger of that in New York. Um, and even Elizabeth Curran is saying, even though things are quite good now, that she's worried about the, the future. And what I would say is uh, twofold. The first thing to say is that it's not the end of the world if one part of your city uh, no longer has those sorts of properties, those sorts of opportunities. And you can't buck the market if that's what's happening to the real estate market. And you know, there's, no, there's not much you could do uh, you know, to kind of pr prevent that or, or, or deal with that. The second thing to say is that you can use the planning system, you can use planning gain, you can use the political system to negotiate this uh, you know, with uh, the city authorities. And I think one of the things I've been hearing about New York, for example, is that it's, po it's, it's probably true to say that some parts of the artistic and cultural community perhaps aren't, haven't organized themselves collectively well enough to take up these kinds of issues uh, with the property owners and developers and with the city government. So, but you've got to be well organized to do that because you've, be, you've got to be prepared to negotiate that in a fairly cutthroat way. I'm not as negative or as uh, pessimistic as I think some people are. So I think that although obviously the biggest hurdle going forward for artists coming to New York City is, is rent and you know, being able to, to, to live here just physically, literally, uh, I think in general actually that the signs, at least you can see today, are that the creative economy is incredibly robust, incredibly vibrant. And as far as I can tell, the number of art galleries has never been greater. The number of venues for musicians to play in has never been greater. Uh, even writers to some extent, although it's probably harder for writers than a lot of other uh, industries, um, you know, still have places, as many places to publish as ever. And so I guess I'm more optimistic that people are going to continue to come to New York and that that's going to remain in place. And I think one of the paradoxes that New York City is facing is that the very thing that's making New York a harder place to live in terms of rent and affordability, which is to say the, bit, the boom that we've had over the last five, six years, or arguably you can go, say it goes back to the mid-90s with a small detour in the, around the turn, of the, the turn of the century, that that very boom is actually creating the conditions that make artists even more willing to come here because you know th that's the very thing that's actually making it possible to make a lot of money being an artist. The best thing that you can do is really support the social milieu and the density that's important. And so you can do things like zone for artists living, you know, where there are galleries. So you actually create the communities where they do their business and live and hang out. 
and so you can kind of create it artificially. It's never really been done. I mean, artist residencies have been done, but the idea of really incorporating it into a city and into the social milieu where they, they work and do business um, hasn't been done, but that might be a way to really make it happen. Because we think of ourselves as the greatest city in the world, and I think we think of that, probably think of ourselves as that more now than we have for a long time, um, that it, the idea that we should, we need to court anyone or do anything special to get people to come here seems, I don't know, a little strange. It's like, well, of course you want to come here. It's New York City. Like, why wouldn't you want to be here? And I think that's right. I think there is a, like a huge allure. But on, on the other hand, I mean, I think that this is where Elizabeth is probably right, that, you know, starting to think seriously about exactly what the artistic community means to us and why it really is fundamental to make sure they stay here will put us in a better position to deal with the problem if it arises. Place and density are important, of course they are, but they're not the only thing. And just because uh, that element of uh, place and density and the collision of cultural ideas coming together works in a place like Manhattan, you know, 10 years ago to create this set of circumstances. It doesn't mean that that's the only way in which it can happen. And it's probably true to say that it's probably not going to happen that way in the future. Um, what I would say is that um, the ways in which the creative people interact with each other and with their customers and marketplaces is, is, is various and it's, gonna, it's getting more various. And I think I wouldn't want to um, locate the debate about this on, you know, how do we support artists to all be in the same place? I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about artists and creative people. They're very good at looking after themselves. I'd just be saying, how can we create the sorts of environments across our city uh, uh, which is conducive to this kind of thing? Keeping in mind the fact that, you know, particularly younger generations are getting their head around these new communications technologies and using them in incredible, new, interesting ways. And it might be that all being in the same expensive place in the city is going to be less important, which is good. It's really nice to have uh, an institution like the Forum for Urban Design send a strong signal that they do care about something like this and to have people who spend a lot of their working life studying it able to share their knowledge about it to people who care about it.